Okay. So can you hear me, Raj? Yeah, I can hear you, yes. Okay. So you can probably get started, I think. Okay. I think yeah. we have everybody. Uh, let me see. I'm missing Shreya here. I don't see Shreya. I don't see Ramya. Ramya. I, I will have to leave in, at 4.30. That is our, uh, Phoenix time, 4.30. Okay. So just wanted to let you know today. Okay. Um, okay. So we don't have everybody. I don't know if they tried and gave up or uh, we're not planning to come in today. Sorry, could you repeat again? I don't, I don't see everybody here. I don't know if they, they attempted before and, and they gave up and went away. But no, no, I see everybody there. I see five people there, Raj. One second. Let me, let's ask them to turn on the video. Yeah, I'm missing uh, Ramya Rao and Shreya. Correct. And I think if I tried a couple of times to get in myself. I was just persistent. The yeah. others may not have, uh, they may have given up trying. <laughs> right. So. Okay. Um. So, um, Raj, uh, we have yep. Suvarna uh, who is joining today newly. Hi, Suvarna. Hello, Raj. Okay, so hey guys, uh, can you turn on your camera, please? You want to take the camera or just one at a time? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, Raj, uh, all right. Okay, I see Shankar and Kartik, I see Aryaman. Okay, I guess uh, this is what we're going to have today. All right. No issue. So, um, all right. So, Suvarna, since you are new here, uh, so can you just briefly introduce yourself, what kind of uh, background you have? And I asked the question of all the other people yesterday, two things you'd like to get out of this workshop and be as specific as you can be. So, uh, you're on mute if you're talking. Hi. Um... Yeah, so I'm actually new to this uh, uh, and then uh, I heard about this workshop uh, like this is a big for the vocal uh, uh, related thing and you're going to give some tips how we can manage while we are singing or uh, some kind of stuff like that. I'm yeah. basically a classical singer and uh, um, I used to sing. Uh, initially, but uh, uh, in the middle of my uh, singing career, I have uh, issues with my vocal cords. Mm -hmm. um, so I went through a treatment in India as well, uh, took medicines. And uh, like uh, four or five years, I took break from completely from my singing. And uh, now I started singing again, like last two years. But sometimes I feel uh, I have pain here while singing, or if I talking more like a continuously one hour or two hours then I feel the pain so much and even in the, if I sing like more than two or three songs then I feel a, a dryness in my throat and all those stuff so Ramya said that uh, you're going to give some kind of tips while we are singing or some, some kind of yeah. stuff so I just wanted to join the workshop and see how it will help me so, so you're absolutely welcome uh, I just I should warn you though that you know uh, I said this yesterday also that, um, you know, uh, there are sometimes, you know, medical, biological reasons why you have trouble with singing. And I don't want to claim that, you know, I can fix those things. Uh, I can only give tips on, you know, singing with, for normal voices. And it, for all we know, your voice may be normal. And so the problems that you're facing are exactly the same as all of us face, just a tired voice, um, a voice that is not, you know, properly hydrated or using too much air, all those things. Um, so we will definitely, uh, we talked about breathing yesterday and we'll recap it briefly today uh, now, but uh, the way this is um, structured is that we, I'm going to try and bring some of the lessons I have myself learned from Western voice coaches and adapted to, you know, uh, Indian music. So it turns out that all the people here are Southerners, so mostly all Carnatic music, and I think at least one uh, sort of film song fan. So uh, we will try and uh, you know make it easy and accessible for people so that everybody can enjoy the benefits of it. 
but you know with that caveat that you know i'm no doctor i don't know uh, beyond these sort of elementary things how to fix voices okay. so, all right all right guys so first question um so before i get started uh, to those of you who were yesterday um were there any audio issues could you hear me properly throughout did it ever come in and out no i think it was fine this one mm-hmm. okay um i don't know why the camera keeps going on and off for some of you guys but okay it is what it is um anybody tried the uh, the practice exercise i gave you Yeah. Can yeah. The the one with the belly breathing. Uh, I also sent a detailed couple of emails on how to do the sardinelli breathing that I told you about. I don't it think has... I got any emails, but of course that could be because I'm not formally registered or whatever into this. Oh, session. Oh, 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 oh. So it could be that maybe you could send it to that email that is showing up there. I had just uh, informally oh, I see. I see. Okay. sent a ah, message right. to because I don't kind of fall into this range of uh, the youth that you are teaching as well. So I had just uh, mentioned, <laughs> and I said, "Okay, let me." Do. She said, "Come on." Oh, okay. Right. okay, so I did, I didn't know this subtlety. So because Ramya is uh, managing the correct, the correct. No, and I understand. I thought, let me just let you know since you yeah. mentioned the email. Okay, all right. So if okay, you send it anything that you're sending, if you send it to this uh, email that's showing up, that okay. should be fine. No problem. So the the reason I send it on email and not on WhatsApp is that mm-hmm. that we can have a record, right? Yes. We can keep it around. Uh, WhatsApp will disappear after some time. Well, personally, I am also uh, uh, yes, I'm old school, yes. so I prefer email, not WhatsApp. Okay. So I, it works for me. Okay, so let's start by. doing a brief recap of what we did yesterday so everybody uh, i hope you are sitting on your pillows now and not on some not on the ground uh, with your hips uh, slightly elevated from the floor uh, sit straight up uh, try imagine you are you're pushing to the sky from the top of your head and we we're, we're going to do this exercise which is kind of what we did yesterday uh, we're going to your one of your hands on your uh, belly and the other hand okay let me see if i can do all this okay so you can see let's see put it back so keep your hand like this keep your other hand right at the bottom of your rib cage where the last rib is okay i want you to lower your shoulders relax not not force him down just relax breathe in and feel your uh, belly expand and then when with the belly expanded i want you to do this i will demonstrate first and then you guys can do it so i want you to do ha and breathe in short breath okay ha 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 but every time only the 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 belly should move in and out ha 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 like that as loudly as you can and as explosively as you can so you should, you should feel this uh, hand move in and out uh, when you breathe in it should come out as much as it can and then when you go ha it should go in and then when you breathe in again so let's do this each one of you will do this 10 times okay on my count and go ha so this is the um expansion or the extension of the exercise i taught you yesterday about breathing what how to breathe with your belly and the reason we do this is to activate those muscles so that you you get a physical sensation of what it means to sing from the belly because from this point on everything we do is going to be with with this pot belly technique we are going to expand the belly and let the belly go in the belly will never go in all the way like you exhausted all your air 
we're always going to maintain some air in our lungs at all the time. And this is because you actually need very little air to think. And the second is, if you exhaust all the air, it is called what is called a reservoir. If the air in your lungs is completely exhausted, then you have no choice but to take a deep gasp of breath in, which makes it inefficient. So you always want to keep a little cushion of air. And, and the only motion that you do um, in while singing is a slight up and down. Up and down. But the thing is, you have to get used to this. Your body has to get used to taking short breaths like sipping and not deep breaths. You, you may be uh, used to singing like that and you'll have to break that habit. But for now, I'm just telling you what it is look like. Okay, so today we're going to progress to the next step, which is the uh, exercise for vocal resonance. So what does vocal resonance mean? So the basic idea is that, you know, we all think we sing just with our throats, right? That's where the sound comes for sure. That's where it originates. The way it originates is that we have this engine or pump in our lungs, uh, which is pumped by the diaphragm. And then air is pushed out and then comes up through the, the vocal tract. And then the vocal cords, they kind of whistle, like when you whistle with a little penny whistle you might have, right? When you blow air through it, the sound comes out. But it's a very complicated whistle, right? And so when the air comes through that, the sound is produced. And this sound is very much like if you have heard a hummingbird. If you stand next to a tree where a hummingbird is sitting and suddenly you, you hear the sound. Right? It's almost like a, almost an electric hum. And that, that sound, if you magnify it many times, you know, in frequency, that's what is happening inside your throat. But it's tiny, right? There's only the small. Hummingbird is at least this big. The vocal track, uh, vocal cord is much smaller. And that sound, if there was nothing else, if you were singing purely from your throat, nobody would be able to hear it. There's a lot of amplification that happens when that sound comes out when there. The sound waves travel, they travel up the windpipe into this pharynx area, into the mouth and the nose, and it comes out like this. So the, the, uh, the passage that goes, uh, that allows the sound to come out from your voice is what adds resonance, right? It acts as an amplifier. But the funny thing about it is that all of us have different, um, uh, amplifiers. So each one of us has a unique voice tract. This is this is what gives us unique voices. So is anybody waiting here? Okay, let's see. Anybody else waiting now? What happened to Karthik and Shankar? I think you may have lost someone there. I had seen that name Shankar. There was, I think, the yeah, two boys. Yeah. Oh, they are? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I don't know what happened. Um, yeah. I could must have lost the connection. Okay, let's give them a minute to get their audio on. Hey, Kartik and Shankar, what's going on? Are you losing the connection? So I think it just left the meeting or something. I'm not exactly sure. I think it okay. should be. Okay. Well. This is, this is our day of Zoom trouble, so we will try and manage. Um, hi, Shreya. Ah, there you are. Okay. Okay, sorry. So just for, for the benefit of the two of you guys, uh, now uh, somehow Ramya got kicked out. There you go. Okay. Um, so just to recap the, the last few bits, so today we're going to talk about how to get vocal resonance. And vocal resonance is about how our voice tract, including starting from the throat, through, up, through our pharynx, out our mouth and nose, amplifies that sound that is created by the vocal tract. And each one of us has a unique vocal tract. That's what makes our voices unique. Right? So that's, that's, that's what gives the sort of particular feel to your voice. And what we are going to do today is look at techniques as to how to maximize that. 
how to back, you know, use the full force and full power of all the resonances that are inside your, um, uh, your voice box. And also there are adjacent cavities in the head also that am help amplify much like a, like a Tampura uh, tumba or the, the box in the guitar, right? That's what adds volume to it. So the, the, the purpose of making sure that we use resonance, there are, it is the base of everything we do in singing. Number one, it will reduce the effort you have to put into sing because you're getting this amplification in your body for free. Second, it is what makes our voices warm, right? That's what makes somebody's voice pleasant to listen to and, um, uh, you know, uh, makes the voice attractive. Third thing, if you use your resonances properly, that's what gives you vocal range. So you can go up and down, you know, without any problem, uh, hit the notes you want to. And finally, the fourth is if you use your resonances properly, you can sing in a relaxed manner. So you don't have to get stressed out and, you know, uh, be all uh, 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 you know, cringed up when you sing. So all this will allow you the fundamental thing that this workshop is about, which is longevity. As I said yesterday, I want you guys to be able to sing for years and years and decades after this. And so in order for you to do this, you want to make sure that you have all the right practices built into your, uh, right techniques built into your daily practice. So in other words, the, the key question that I'm trying to answer for you guys is how to practice properly. So today I'm going to, yesterday uh, we did about, mostly about breathing. Today I'm going to teach you how to practice your voice properly. So that A, you don't hurt your voice and B, you feel good about it because it sounds good. Okay, so here goes. So the first so, uh, resonance exercise is, uh, you might, okay. So before I start, I'll tell you, I told you this yesterday also, I'm going to make you do exercises that you may find ridiculous. But just like yesterday when I was pushing my stomach in and out, believe me, it actually works. I, I know it works because it has worked for me. So bear with me while I take you through all these um, exercises that you may not want to do in public perhaps, but you should definitely do in the privacy of your bedroom or your shower or wherever you want to do it. And it will definitely help you. Okay. First exercise. It is the, I think the most fundamental exercise that all singers should know. I mean, it's not really an exercise by itself, but it's useful for singing. That is the yawn. So you may think that this yawning is some, something silly. What has got to do with singing? Well, what the yawn does is opens the back of your throat. So remember, in order for the sound to come out, everything in this passage has to be as open and unobstructed as possible. So the yawn will help make this as wide as you can. Now, if, if you might find some other uh, instructions also that you say, oh, yawning is the, the right thing to do with starting. It's okay, but it's also overstated. So I'll tell you right away that yawning is a good thing, but it's only a beginning. Ultimately, the exercise itself is not yawning. Okay, but it's a yawning is the precursor to the exercise I'm going to teach you. The first thing I want all of you to do is try and yawn. So for me, if I start yawning, I won't stop because it's so easy for me to yawn. I don't know how it is for you. So don't feel shy, just yawn. Go for it, go as many times as you can. Don't, don't feel shy, it's okay. It's, it's absolutely the best thing to relax you. It will relax not only your voice, but also your body. Oh. Right? Do it at least three times so that you, you get a feel for your body wants to just slump down like that. Okay, so everybody nice and relaxed. Okay, so before we get to the exercise, exercise I want you to do one more thing that will allow you to uh, sort of leverage this relaxation from the yawn. So because I you know normally this would a Western coach will not tell you, but because I know how Indian singers are, I want you to do this. I want you to roll your shoulders like this as much as well as you can. 
first in one direction, then roll in the other direction. Okay, five times each way. Okay, the next exercise, I want you to roll your necks. Five times in each direction. So every time you sing, you should do these two things, rolling your shoulders and rolling your neck. Because this part is where all the action is. And any tension that you have in your neck, in your head or in your shoulders will affect your singing. So absolutely essential that you relax yourself as much as possible, okay? Okay, now that you've relaxed your body, next thing is to relax your voice and launch your voice in that relaxed state. So what is the relaxation? That's the yawn. But now I'm going to show you how to launch it from that point. We're going to go, I'm going to yawn, and then I'm going to sing a note in that yawn. So it doesn't matter what note it is, whatever comes to you will do. You have to do whatever uh, your throat is most happy doing, okay? So it goes like this. Okay, again. Okay, this is the voice relaxation method number one. So let's do it one by one. Uh, Arpana, why don't you start? Uh, please unmute yourself. I can't yawn. I'm not tired right now. I just can't. I can't yawn. I just can't. Everybody can yawn. I can't right now. Okay, you just pretend to yawn. It doesn't matter. Just make the make the motion of yawning. Make sure that you take in that big breath that happens at the beginning of a yawn. And then the rest of it will trigger itself. Okay. Open your mouth wide. Go. No, that's not a wide mouth. I want it open way more. Way more than that. And then do I just, what do I do? Okay, again. And, and remember to make that sound when you come down. I couldn't hear you. Uh, were you making a sound? Are you no. muted? No, 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 I wasn't doing anything. Okay, make a sound. So go. Oh. <sighs> All right. Uh, Aryaman, you want to go next? Come on, guys, it's only a yawn. Not, not, not ha. I want you to make a note. Oh. Something. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, all right. Why, you, why don't you work on it while we get something else? Okay, Shreya, you want to try? Uh, sure, this is probably going to be bad. <laughs> but... Hey, there's no good or bad here. Just yawn. That's okay. Nobody has a good <laughs> <Yawn. laughs> It's a yawn. That's it. And by the way, it's supposed to be contagious, but I don't see it catching on here. <laughs> no, it's definitely contagious. I can't stop now. <laughs> okay, go for it. <sighs> ah, there you go. Beautiful. Again. Oh, again. Okay. <sighs> there you go. Sustain it. Go. All the way down. Oh. Uh. Don't close your mouth. Oh. Uh. You're closing your mouth. Don't, don't, don't be shy. It's okay. Oh. Uh. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Okay. Karthik, you're below the horizon for me. Can you <laughs> rise up and then yawn? Yeah. There you go. 
ha. No, that was not a yawn. Come on, I didn't say say ha. I said yawn. Okay. Ha. Oh. Okay. How about you say say ha. yawn and yawn while doing it? Yawn. Yawn. There you go again. Ha. You don't have to move your head that much. You go, ha. Oh. Ha. All the way down. All the way until you lose all the breath. Ha. Ha. Okay. I don't know why this is so hard. Okay. Suvarna, you want to try? Ha. <laughs> yeah. Ha. Ah, beautiful. There you go. Please don't close your mouth at the end. Oh. Keep your mouth open. Oh. There you go. You're still closing your mouth, but okay. good. Okay. Uh, Anita? Oh, you're on mute, man. You need to unmute. I'm on mute. Never mind. I have to unmute myself. Okay. Yeah. <sighs> so, take a full breath in. <sighs> there you go. Yeah. One more time. <sighs> Very nice. Okay, Mr. Shankar. Okay. Uh, uh, there you go. Okay, okay. Come a little harder. Yes, yes, you can uh, do it. Uh, Don't close your mouth at the end. Keep your mouth open. Okay. Why? Well, open your mouth like a hippo. This, okay. <laughs> uh, you cannot sing if you cannot open your mouth. So sing. You know, I know you're a good singer. So. I know you have, you opened your mouth much bigger than this. <laughs> there you go. Okay, Aryaman, you want to try again? Okay. Um, sure. No, no, no stress. Don't be stressed about it. Yeah. <laughs> just, just say something and then yawn. Um. Yawn? Say yawn. Say the word yawn. And then yawn. Yeah. Okay, yeah. this is it. This is how I yawn. This is how I yawn. There you go. Okay. Try try slowly. Slow it down now. This is how I yawn. This is how I yawn. Good, better, getting better. Okay, let's see. Let's go back to Arpana. Okay, let's see if you can do it now. Open your mouth really wide and say, this is how I yawn. 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 Hi, Jayashree. I saw your face. Are you planning to yawn with us or you have to keep your mask on? You're, you're muted. We keep our masks on 100% of the time. Okay, but I was asking, do you want to do it with the mask on? I'm okay with that. No worries, I'm, I'm following along with you guys. Okay, all right, okay. Okay, so next step in this yawning exercise is we're going to keep the mouth open. So the whole point of yawn is to basically relax this jaw muscle here. Right? Because what happens for all of us, Carnatic singers especially, is that we bite our nose. Yeah, 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 like that, right? There you go. See, Ariman, you can yawn. Yes. <laughs> See, it's possible. <laughs> all right. Okay. So this is what I'm going to do now. So we're going to, uh, when we end the yawn, I want you to hold it. So don't lose all your breath. Don't expand it all in the yawn. I want you to first make a big belly. And then you're going to get to the top of the yawn. Open your mouth. 
and then sing a note, okay, any note. Just sing a note and keep, make sure the belly doesn't collapse, right? And because, so it's going to look like this. Okay, one more time. Just make sure the belly is out. The thing that you cannot see that I am doing, that you also need to do, is that when you reach the top of that yawn, when you get when you're ready to expel, keep that inside space of your oral cavity unchanged after that point. That's what I'm doing. Oh, so nothing inside is changing. You cannot see it, of course, but that's what you should feel. Okay, so I let you guys do it since many of you are so shy. I let you guys practice it first on mute, and then we'll unmute one by one and see how it sounds. Okay. So it should sound like this. Okay. So you can try it on your own uh, with the mute on or off, whatever. Either way, I don't care. But I want to see you guys try it. Come on, Arpana, you can do it. Oh. Yeah, Karthik, can you roll your camera? I can't see your face. There you go. Okay. Looks like all of you are trying. Very good. Now, who wants to go first? I'll take volunteers. I, I can go. Okay, let, please. Let me do this. Ah. Yeah. Uh... Beautiful. So I want all of you guys to see how she did it, right? It's not just me. The voice sounded relaxed. There was no pushing or feeling of strain. It was just her air coming out of her voice cords and it's unobstructed because your mouth is open and the back of the throat is open and that's all we want. Nothing complicated. Who wants to go next? I want, you know, normally in a class like this, everybody will start yawning by now, but you guys are a little bit wound up. So. <laughs> Who I'll wants go to go next? next? I'll go next. Okay. Uh... Very good. Uh, I, I'm, I'm assuming you're doing, you know, holding your breath in your yeah. belly also. Mm -hmm. oh, very good. That sounds very good too. Who, who can go next? I see Shreya has her mouth open. Let's try her. Shreya, unmute yourself, please. I can't stop actually yawning. <laughs> oh, there you go. It's even better. <laughs> okay, so all you have to do is keep that yawn and Make it long, make it last. Okay. Uh... Honey, don't close your mouth. Oh, keep it open. Uh... Perfect. So that is the way to do it. Okay, Ariman, you were yawning a minute ago. Let's try that now. No, no, it's okay. It's fine. Uh, Very good. Very good. It is, that's, that's the way. So, in fact, if you feel ever that your voice is cracking, this is a way to build strength to your vocal cords. So, so do this yawn and hold this note. Do it one more time. Uh, open at the end until you have fully sung the note. Do not close your mouth. Okay. 
Very good. Okay, Shankar. Okay. Uh, uh, big mouth, big mouth. Come on, open wide. Uh, okay, one more time. Okay. Uh, ah, the second time sounds better. Okay, you sounded like you're yawning. Karthik? Wow, okay. One more time. So I, I'm not, I don't know, maybe because it's sitting far away. I'm not hearing a relaxed uh, tone. I want to see you really wanting to fall asleep. Okay, better. So remember, it's not the quality of the note or the pitch or anything that matters. What matters is the relaxation. And when you sing like that, your listener will be relaxed too. That's the whole point of it. Uh, Anita? Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I went, uh, oh, you went, first. Okay, okay. I went to the beginning, but I'm happy to do it again if you want. It's okay. Let's try uh, Arpana. Uh, Nice. Don't close your mouth. Uh, again, one more time. Relax it. Let, let your body go. Uh, you what you're doing is right. I want to add a slight change to it, just for now, just to add an H in front of it. Ha, like that. Can you do that again? The same thing you did with that. Ha. Very nice. So see, now you could do it, right? So, okay, I want all of you guys to remember this feeling. This is how you should always feel when you're singing. But it's very hard to do this, right? Because, you know, singing is not about singing ah all the time. There'll be words and notes and complications and rhythm. And, and so it's not going to be possible. This is just an ideal. It will probably never be achieved. But any time you feel that you're getting too worked up in your music and your singing, always you can retreat back to this bass position to say, yawn, hold the note, and remember how it feels. That it relaxes your body, and once you relax your body, the rest of it will come, you know, it will get reflected in your voice as well. Okay, everybody good with this? Any questions? Okay, next exercise. So as I promised, this is going to get more and more ridiculous, okay? Next one is really ridiculous. So this has to do with the fact that you know when you yawn, we raise the roof of the mouth to the back, right? Because that's the, the opening opens up maximally. But there is one thing that is still obstructing the channel, and that is your tongue. So your tongue is sitting in the bottom of your mouth, and most of us we kind of retract the tongue back, and so it kind of partially obstructs the. Uh, uh, the, the channel, the oral channel. So the next exercise to release your tongue is to do this. And I promise you, it's going to look ridiculous, but it's okay. I'm going to push my tongue out as much, as far as it will go. And then I'm going to sing a note. It looks like this. Okay, I'm going to go. Enough? Okay, one more time. See, I am shameless, so you, you should be shameless too. Ah. Okay, so why don't you all try with the mute on so that you know you, you can feel the sensation first and then we will try it. <clears throat> so this is this this sort of releases the tongue, which is kind of stuck to the back of your throat. You want to push it forward, so it comes it gets out of the way. But pull it really forward, push the tongue out, and like that, right? This is a yoga mudra like this. 
and then you sing. And when you sing, I want you to really give it your all. Right? Don't, don't hold back. Don't try to sculpt the voice or sound good or anything like that. Just, just punch it. Okay, and when you guys are ready, we'll unmute and start listening to you. Was it with a, with some tonality, any kind of sound? No, no, any sound. Just I want you to scream. Ah, like that is what activates certain. Um, it's called a formant in uh, vocal technique, but uh, that's what it is. Yeah. Okay, guys, have looks like you've tried it out. Okay, so let's see. Okay, we'll try with Swarna first this time. Ah. There you go. Awesome. You want to go one more time? So this time it will come out even louder. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Very good. Okay, Mr. Hayden Seek uh, Karthik. Stick your tongue out as far as it will go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hold it. Okay, your audio was cutting in and out for me. I don't know if this uh, let's do one more time, please. Okay. Very good. You, you did very well. Uh, let's see, Arpana. Uh, louder, louder! Give it all. I want, I want to see the the screen shake. Uh, That's all. Come on. You have more breath in you than that. Come on. So okay, don't be shy. You know, we're all in the same boat here. Uh, don't be in such a hurry to pull your tongue back. It's okay. Let it hang out a little bit. Uh, Shreya? Uh, Shreya? Uh, can, can you lower your camera a bit? I can't see your face. Yeah. Uh, One more time. Uh, Very good. Ariman. Uh, louder. Louder. Huh? Louder, louder. Yeah. Okay, so one thing I should point out, which I didn't point out, so when I did this, right, I, I made it sound nasal. So I want you to also, you know, don't, don't be afraid, don't try to sound manly or anything like that. Ah, it's okay. Ah, give everything, all uh, orifices open, just let it go. Ah, there you go. Nice. Anita? Here, uh, yeah. Uh... Very nice. Uh, one more time. I, I wanted to uh, add some nasality to it. I can't tell. Uh, on Zoom, that's a problem. But try and make it more nasal. Like higher I, pitched? No, no, nasal. Ah, like a, ah, add some no nose to it as well. Okay. <clears throat> ah.
very nice okay shankar all right uh, hey come on did you say you just, you said more effort. Effort. Uh, I, I need you to really you know I, I be annoying try and be annoying okay uh, when did it stop just keep going okay okay let's go uh, oh, sorry. Uh. <laughs> okay just make sure your tongue is all the way out as far as, as, far as it can go okay uh, Okay, very good. Okay, so the purpose of this, these two exercises together, the yawn and this, I don't know what, what name to give to this, is to say, um, uh, that the, the most of us, you know, when, especially the trained among us are more susceptible to this, we try and hold back our words. We try and say, oh, I don't sound good. I, I need to, I've seen this in, especially with kids who are, you know, one or two years into classical music, because they are trying to sound like their teacher. The teacher is singing some complicated thing and they're trying to follow as closely as possible. But in the process, they have to kind of control their voice and they kind of close it down and they never learn to open it up again. So these are kinds of bad habits. I had to unlearn myself after 30 years of bad habits. I had to kind of unlearn Took me five years just to unlearn all this, right? So the point of this exercise is to open up your voice to say, you know, doesn't matter what it is, until you're completely free, you won't be able to do all the marvelous things that you can do with your voice. Okay, so now that we have, I have you here, um, we will go to the first singing exercise per se. So it, and it just has to go with what is called, you, if you look up, uh, you'll see, it is called singing in the mask. So this face has all these parts to it, right? The, the nose, the lips, the eyes, the cavities behind the eyes, all this has to resonate. So today's being about resonance, I'm going to teach you how to feel the resonance in your face. And the best way to feel that resonance is to hum, right? What in yoga would be called Brahmari, but Brahmari in a certain way. So this, I did not learn. I learned Brahmari from my yoga teacher, but this kind of humming, I learned from my voice teacher. So the, the, the most important part of humming for singing is to make sure that your lips are completely relaxed. You feel like rubber, right? So when you sing, uh, when you hum rather, your lips should be just touching. And when you touch, uh, you know, it, it'll buzz like this when you see, when you're humming. It almost tickle you so much that you won't be able to hum anymore. Okay, when you do that, that is when you get the first part of your mask into position. So this is what it, it, it looks like. So, but before I need to give you a way to relax your lips. So not everybody has relaxed their lips. I, I think children have it kind of by, uh, by gift because they're children. Uh, the adults among us, we don't have such relaxed lips. So I'm going to give you a very short, um, and another ridiculous exercise to relax your lips. It's called lip drilling. And the way it goes is like this. You're going to go. So nothing but just putting air through your lips and holding it. And if you can't, you know, get your lips to do that, you can use your fingers like this. Okay, so I want you to do this, try this, and, and then we'll get into the humming part because this, you'll, you'll get the same sensation when you're humming and you want to make sure that you get that sensation in the humming part, otherwise you're not humming correctly. So let's, this is called the lip drilling. So let's all of us do together. I won't embarrass you by making you all do it separately. Okay, so if you want, you can put your fingers up against the sides of your lips, or if you can do it without that, that's also fine. But the way it is, is you pucker your lips and you blow to that. So you 
you should do this every day for the rest of your life. If you do this, your voice will be really, really silky smooth. Okay? And I, I do this every day. Just, you know, you can do it anywhere, you know, walking, in the bathroom, wherever you are, right? It's one of those things that we never think about, but it's actually very, very useful. And now, now, okay, has everybody done this? No? Make sure you have trilled and you feel your lips kind of uh, activated and buzzing now. So now comes the humming part. So we're going to, as I said, you're going to imagine that yawn that we just did, where the back of your throat was open. You're going to close the lips just so that the lips touch like this. And then we are going to hum. Any note is okay, but not changing any other position. Like that. Any note doesn't matter, but make sure that you feel that buzz in your lips when you do that. Okay, go for it, uh, and then we'll unmute after you have tried it a few times. Mm -hmm. So this does two things. It makes your lips relaxed enough that it will, when you sing, it won't come in the way. It also then opens up your nose. That is the last part of this cavity, right? So the first part is the larynx, right? The second part is, which we cannot open, it's just involuntary. Second part is the back of our voice, which is we opened up the yawn. The third part is opening the front of your mouth. That's why I'm saying your lips should barely touch, not bite down. Right? You should, the inside of your mouth should be like a cave. And then the front, which is the nose. So all this brought together goes mm. Okay? Who wants to go first this time? I, I, I can do a, maybe a few sounds. Is that okay or just one? No, no, so we'll get to progress. Because it's more natural, I think, to have a couple of sounds, perhaps, but, uh, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, you can. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the only drawback, and ultimately when you're singing, we have to do all this, is that I can't tell if you're changing the, uh, the positions of your inside of your mouth when you change notes. So as long as you make sure that nothing has moved inside, only the note has changed. When it changed. Ah, okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll do that again. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll stop there because I had to take another breath. Right. <laughs> okay. Uh, who wants to go next? Okay, please. Mm. Nice. So, did you feel your lip? Uh, yeah, buzzing, buzzing here. Yep. Yeah. Very important. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Did you did you feel it? Did you, okay? Your nose should also feel a little part of the action here. Yeah? yeah. Okay, Arpana. Okay, very good. One more time. Shreya? Uh, sorry, did you see me? Yes. One 
orang tuh? Hmm. Nice. Uh, Shankar? Hmm. Sounded very nice. Uh, so make sure that the inside of your mouth is all fully open. Do it one more time. Mm. Beautiful. Okay, Kartik. Mm. One more time. I can't. I can't hear you completely. Come closer. Yeah. Mm. So you feeling so. The, all of you should have felt that you know somehow this the front of your face is vibrating, right? So at least the lower half of the face. So that is the mask. When this vibrates, that adds a tremendous amount of volume to your voice. So that's why then you don't have to shout, you don't have to push your voice and make yourself heard. It just happen for free. Okay. So there's one more part of the face that is this part of the face, the eyes. That is the hardest to use in resonance. And that is in fact, almost I'd say completely missing in Carnatic singers. Um, it is there sometimes in Hindustani singers, uh, but in vocal music, they'll, in Western music, they'll make it a point to teach you this, okay? And so the way to get that resonance is called pharyngeal resonance. Pharynx is the top part of this windpipe before it enters the mouth. And it's because it's up there near the, the back of the mouth, it's very hard to get to. So there are only some words or some sounds that help you access that resonance. And the, the best way to do that is to do the NG sound, mm. right? So like hung or sung or sing or ping or whatever. So the, the next resonance exercise, the last one is this called the ing sound. So you're going to, you know, what, what you need to do is, you know, obviously to do the in your tongue will go to the roof of your mouth and you're going to say, sing like this. So you can start with sing. And when you do the ing, I you want to be as piercing as possible, right? So try to be like annoyed, like the annoyed person, like this nasal twang, it's called. Uh, apparently a technical term, twang. And basically what it is, is it activates your uh, nasal resonance and the resonance is behind uh, the nasal passages. So, uh, so on mute, you can try it with me. So it's basically, uh, take a breath, make sure all this time, need, you should remember this now, always use the belly and go. So you can make your face also like that. It'll actually help to make the sound properly. So what it does is it, it blocks any sound from coming out of your mouth. It forces all the, the sound to come out of your nose and then it starts to kind of forcibly push all the uh, cavities, the upper half of your oral tract. Okay, you guys try it for yourself and then we'll unmute. Yeah, I want to see the puckered face. It's, it's almost like you can even add the nya to it. Right? That's what they do in reality. But we'll start with ing. Ing is sort of simpler, but eventually you'll have to convert it to nya like that. Right? That's what fully gives you the pharyngeal resonance. Okay. Um, okay, let's start. Uh, let's see. Ariman, you want to try us? Yeah. Very good. I wanted to make it even more nasal like that. Yeah. 
in the beginning it should be hard to produce that sound because we are not used to doing this right uh, arpana One more time. You really make it nasal. Yeah. Okay, Shankar. Mm. Very good. See ya. Beautiful. Again, one more time. Just, just make it nasal. Make it really annoying. Yeah. Very good. Anita. You're still on mute. You're you're on mute. Oh wait, is it still me? Anita, huh? no, no. Anita is on mute. Anita, I'm you need. Sorry, to... I was on mute. Okay, I'm sorry, I was on mute. Let yeah, me. Please try it again. Yeah. Ah, towards the end, I could see all the sound is coming through your nose. That's how it should be, all the time. So, mm, like that. I can do that again then. So let me yes. start with that. Yeah. Very nice. So now. Sing. Again, very good. So that was a very nice formant. So I'll now tell you what the formant is and why we do this. So remember, yesterday I told you about my inspiration for starting on this was this boy who sang in the middle of the football field. and it could be heard in the most bleed seats so i researched this to say okay what causes um voice to be carried long distances so it turns out that when you normally talk you know there's a certain set of frequencies that are used in that set of um speech and it's different for each one of us but it's kind of within some envelope when you sing especially if you sing well it turns out that there is another higher set of frequencies that you are also generating as you sing this is called the formant and the formant only comes when you use all these nasal passages properly and that is what if you remember in the old days western orchestras you know they still had all the uh, instruments but there was no mic so the singer or singers had to be heard on top of the orchestra so they learned how to sing this so in, in fact even in our own you know so in yakshagana for example right if you if you listen to them you know they they have been performing long before mics were on stage and they would have this piercing voice and that piercing voice happens because of this thing called the formant and that happens because they're using this resonance this resonance is creating these extra frequencies in the voice that is heard above the instruments because these instruments don't go that high and that's what you hear and that's what people can hear the sound of the singer in spite of all the din created by the drums and the uh, you know the violins and all the other instruments 
right? But then what happened was, especially in classical music and film singing, when mics became prevalent, people lost their ability. They kind of did not have to use it. And then now you've come to a point where without a mic, you cannot sing. Right? People sound really flat when they sing without a mic. Then they need the mic and they need an amplifier and they say, are they both extra treble, extra bass, whatever, right? It's not really needed. People have managed to sing beautifully without all that in the past. But you've become so dependent. And so this is a, a way of getting over that dependence. Right? It's okay to use a mic, you know, it's good. It's like wearing glasses, you know? but it should not be uh, that you can only sing when there is a mic. Right? And so this, this, these are all exercises that increase that capacity. And of course, in just singing this in one hour is not going to do it. So what you guys need to do is to do this, these exercises that I taught you over time. And, and the nice thing about this is that you can do, I, I don't, I'm not saying you should sit down when you do it. You can lie down and do it. You can walk, you can be doing other things. You can be riding a bike when you do it, but do it often enough it becomes part of your body. So you can do it without thinking. Because when you do it without thinking, it will get automatically incorporated into your singing. Okay. So now to, to put it all together, I'm going to give you an exercise that will now uh, sort of combine these resonances into one. Right. So it goes like this. So, um, so Let me see if I'm here. No. So sometimes when you talk a lot, you lose sense of where the notes are. One second. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to start with a hum, right? Like you just did. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go, I'm going to open my mouth, but gently. And then I'm going to sing a series of notes. It goes something like this. Mm -hmm. That's all, right? So the whole point is to sing these five notes or eight notes um, without moving anything. Not moving your head, moving your tongue, moving your jaw, moving the back of your mouth, nothing. So we get ourselves set in that position with the back of the throat open, the lips just touching. And when I let go of the lips, nothing else should move in the back. But now I'm going to sing actual notes or sequence of notes and control my body as I sing it. So it goes again. Mm -hmm. See, my mouth just opened a little bit and I did not move anything. Okay, so each of you, you have a different um, range. So I'll, I'll let you pick which are, you know, the pitch you want to start at. But why don't you go you know, practice it on your own for a, for a minute or two and then we'll come and do it. Mm -hmm. So you can do a self-check at the end. Is my voice uh, apparatus in exactly the same state I left it in, in the beginning? Okay. Okay, Sorna, you want to try start us off? Yeah. Uh... Start the hum. Close your mouth, start with the hum, with the close mouth, and then open it. Uh...
Sounds very relaxed. Okay. Um, Shreya. Uh, am I unmuted? No, I can hear. So it feels like when you hit the paw, it was a little pinched. Did it feel like you had changed anything in the back of your voice? Maybe. Maybe. Okay, so make sure that, or pick a different note if you want, but make sure that nothing changes. Mm. Just be absolutely relaxed the whole time. Mm. Very nice. Again. <clears throat> Very nice. Anita? It sounded good, but I saw sort of a uh, infinitesimal I, movement of your jaw. So, yeah, so, sure so, that, so the make sure, see, if, if your humming position is correct, then there should be no need to move your jaw after that first movement. So just once you move the jaw to open your mouth, you should just leave it there. Mm. Beautiful. Again. You said you're not a trained singer. You're, you're singing just as well as any trained singer. Thank you. Okay, Arpana. Slowly, take it, take it easy. To the end, just leave it open, but somehow feels I don't know, maybe you just an exception that your voice changed somehow on the way up. So please pay very, very close attention to how it is feeling. It try one more time. Very nice. Are you one? Start with a hum. No, no. You start with a hum, but you open your mouth. You're shaking, you're shaking. So you're shaking your head, you're shaking your face, nothing. So just keep everything else still. Nothing moves. Okay, relax, close your eyes. Start, start in humming position. Can you give me a hum first? Mm, like that. Then just keep everything else perfectly still and then sing ah ah. No. Ah, there you go. Again. Start with the hum and do it again. From the hum to the ah, gently, not not with a jerk. Okay, one more time. Just okay. Start with a strong hum, so that you feel the buzz, and then start. Okay, Shankar. Mm -hmm. 
splendid again nice kartik I don't know if it was the audio cut out, but I heard a gap between the hum and the first note. So make it smooth. Very good. Again. Okay. So we have now done almost all the exercises, and we are. at 5 so I'm, i'm going to give you one last exercise and then we will roll it all up into homework i'll send you the homework by email but this is the exercise so this is the same thing as we did just now with the hum except they're going to do the nya right so we're going to do this nya okay so this is a way to get nasal resonance into your singing yeah yeah why do you guys try it then we go on so now that you guys have you doing this for the second time you feel that it's not so hard you that you are really kind of getting it through that nose so that you know this is the kind of thing that makes people very annoyed right so like that nasal thing now you might think that this is not a good thing for singing of course we're not going to sing like that and just like we're not going to yawn and sing on stage but it's all a component of adding to that so that uh, whether you know it or not your nose will be involved in your singing once you do this okay so let's see who should we start with this time uh we lost our human Hey go. Okay. Uh let's see if you can join. Are you able to hear the exercise? I don't know when you drop. No one go. I think I got the double something. Okay, I'll, I'll do it again. So you also know. So the idea is to use the ng sound and but now I'm going to do all that ng We're going to keep it as nasal as we can. but open the mouth so now the sound is coming out of your mouth and the nose so this is about balance what how to get both the nasal and the oral sounds together all the other rules are the same nothing should move inside your mouth except when you open your mouth to start singing okay so yeah. Uh, who wants to kick us off? Uh, Anita, you want to do it? You're on mute. Yeah. Some prank. Let's see. Uh, uh, uncle, I can go next if you'd like. Oh, absolutely! Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Try to make it even more nasal. <laughs> absolutely perfect. Okay, 
open your mouth a little bit more nya a Hear the real piercing sound. Very good. No, no hurry, yeah. Huh? Slowly. Okay. Karthik. Very good. One more time. That was beautifully done. Yesterday you told me that you are worried about your nasality of your voice. So this is where you know you use it to your benefit. Yeah. Yeah. Ashreya. Yeah. Wait. Sorry. Yeah. Always good. Hum. Sorry. Always. Wait. If you are ever in doubt, start with the hum. Sorry, my dad's in the background. <laughs> okay. Okay. Beautiful. One more time. Let give it some more oomph. Yeah. So in the end, you kind of let go of it. Don't go. Let go until the very end. So do okay. it again. Yeah. Okay, so that brings us to the end of today's workshop. So let me recap all the things we did. So the whole point of today's job, uh, today's uh, uh, workshop was what we call resonance, and the resonance is mostly about the the parts north of the larynx, right? People will tell you that your body resonates with your voice, and all. Uh, maybe I don't believe it, but there are two parts to it. We already did the. the breathing part that supports it so as i started with telling you okay you always keep your belly full and you move it a little bit at a time you don't ever take huge breaths don't don't raise your shoulders you keep your shoulders relaxed and you just need a little bit of breath to do all the singing that's the first second then we we free up our voice by opening the bottom uh, of your uh, throats and the back of your mouth with a yawn and all that then we did the the tongue release right we stuck out the tongue then make make sure that we opened up the back and release the tongue out so in the future you'll have to relax learn to relax the tongue most of us don't relax our tongue so it comes in the way of singing then the the humming to make sure that you know we, now that we have opened the back of our mouth we use this part to resonate properly and for that we use you know we relax our lips and all that then we do the nasal cavity with the ng uh, ng sound and then we put it all together in, in in these notes so that is the basics of resonance resonance is of course a huge topic of its own right some people just get it like this some people is much harder so i am somewhere in between it took me a while to learn all these things myself because i had to as i said unlearn lots of things so some some of you most of you are much younger than me so you have much less challenge um Now, unlearning stuff that you already know, but other than that, um, I think you you guys did very well today, uh, like way well beyond expectation. So you're all on a good track. I think you guys have basically good instincts when it comes to singing. So you will do well. Tomorrow we will take this 
and convert it into the first step of actual singing song, which is the vowels and the consonants that you have to sing now, right? You can't, can't go on stage and sing nya. Right? You have to sing ao, yi, and various consonants. And now we'll sing, learn how to incorporate all these while singing a song. So we break it down to the components, which is essentially vowels, consonants, and I'll teach you how to sing the vowels properly without getting losing all this. So it turns out that a lot of times when we sing the vowels, we forget all this and go back to our old way of singing. And so I have to, uh, I'll show you how you can get past that and kind of build up on this. And so by the time of the fourth day, we'll get to the point of, I think, uh, you know, things, more complex things like improving vocal range, how to sing up and down without having to stress yourself, how to use your voice in a relaxed manner, right? And then the last day, I'll, I'll tell you about you know, how to put it together in more complex situations. Uh, I think there's something called chord compression, which is how to minimize the amount of air you use. So that, you know, the, the minimization of air is the key to long lived voice health. And then all these things I'm teaching you don't just apply to singing, apply to everything, talking, presentations, right? all of this you can use it everywhere because ultimately in every situation you want to sound good. There's no situation where you want to sound harsh. I mean, maybe there are some, you know, maybe if you're a pop singer, you might, once in a while you want to sound, sound harsh just for effect. But most of the time, all these techniques that we're learning here will come in handy. So we'll stop here. I'll email all of you the exercises to do for tonight. Uh, you guys didn't do yesterday's exercise, so I don't know if you'll do today's either. But anyway, as a matter of form, I'm, I'm supposed to give you some homework. So I'll give you some homework to do tonight. And then we'll meet tomorrow and continue. Any questions, any comments, any feedback there for me? Uh, Uncle, do you know about the tip where you use the straw and then you have to go through the straw? Um, and I think like, you can do variations in that and it can help you with the breathing control. So, so I did this, I would have done the straw, except that, you know, that means you need props and I have to go tell you the guys to go get a, a glass of water and a straw and you may not have one handy. So the ish sound that we did, the hissing, is kind of an approximation of the straw blowing method. So the straw is when you blow, you know, controlled release of air through your mouth, right? And you, so instead of doing that, I said, okay, close your mouth and just hiss. And hiss is a controlled way of expelling air. So it's the same thing. I mean, just to be clear, there are any number of exercises like this. I just picked some, I think, that are the most effective for my experience. But if you go look on YouTube, you'll find you know, in number. And, and I'm not saying that one is better than the other, or, but, you know, it, because everybody's different. Uh, what worked for me may not work for you and vice versa. So you have to experiment to some extent to find out what works for you. But I'm just trying to get you to a stage where you're not afraid of experimenting. That's all. So a lot of people don't try because, oh, I don't know what that is. So I want you to get over that fear. Then once then you, I set you free, then you can try everything that you can get your hands on and be all that you can be. Any other questions? Okay, thank you everyone. We will close here and we'll see you all tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Jayashree. Make sure you're there. So you are the, the, the silent person here. So I wanted to hear from you. What do you think of what's going on here? Then? Okay, you're on mute. I can't hear you. How about now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think it's really useful. I mean, these are all uh, tried and tested vocal techniques that um, I think musicians of every genre use. 
Mm-hmm. And um, Maha was uh, not too long ago, um, Maha was actually maybe like, I take it back, but five, six years ago, uh, he had some voice lessons. It was at the time when his voice had taken on a lot of strain and I wouldn't even doubt that he had some nodules on his vocal cord from a lot of strained sing- singing. Mm-hmm. You know, the group singing classes, sometimes when you're singing at somebody <laughs> else's pitch and stuff with girls, those things kind of invite that. But uh, at that time, he took some voice lessons from uh, somebody that teaches, uh, taught at a choir. So it's Western vocal lessons that are actually universally applicable. And so, so many of these, I remember being with him when he was doing this. So this was all familiar. And I know these are all tried and tested, no matter where they sing or how they sing. That's right. Yeah. I mean, the, the thing is, most of it is just they're opening the door for our kids. That's right. And I think you made a very good point by saying it's not just for singing. It's if you don't want to, if you're a teacher and your voice is starting to show strain and hoarseness, these are the same techniques that you'd use to kind of, uh, you know, speak naturally without being, without shouting and things like that. Or in theater, right? If you're acting. Theater too, yes. Yep. So this is, it's, it's pretty good. I'm, I'm glad that some of the kids, you know, showed some interest to sign it, yeah, sign yeah, up I'm for it. I'm quite, quite impressed with the, the engagement. Um, I, I know. Thought, you know, you get kids and they couldn't care less and they're there. No, no, they're I was, well, you know, every time I would like peek in, I would see interested faces. Yeah. It's going good. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. No problem. Good. Well, 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 I'll see you tomorrow then. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I had trouble getting into the meeting today. I was trying your ID and I guess I, I wasn't sure what the Yada no, ID was. I'm not sure why I don't have it. So Ramya has to start the meeting because she's the organizer. I know, and but for whatever reason, I didn't even have like a... Why do I not know the Yada ID? I don't know. I'm not sure. I, because I've oh, been okay. in other of her, uh, you know, when she's hosted other events, I've kind of peeked in and somehow I got in then, but I just couldn't get in today. Because she had to admit us. So ah, that's why she had not admitted, and because she had not admitted, even I couldn't get in. Understood. So finally, I texted Shankar and I said, "Can somebody send me a meeting link?" And mm-hmm. that's when he sent uh, a link to when me, I and that's how I got it. Then I admitted you. That's how it happened. Right. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, so I'm glad uh, you have a good evening, and I'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.